All right, so we are going to take a look at rational radicals. In other words, we're looking at square roots. That's the radical part. And we are going to look for rational answers today. Tomorrow will be irrational, kind of like your parents. Ah. But today, <laughs> all right, at least some of you almost didn't like it. All right, so uh, rational means you're going to end up with numbers that can be expressed as a terminating fraction or most likely a whole number. Okay. Um, you'll know from your work with square roots before that when you take square root, say if you take the square root of 2, I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. If you, if you were to take the square root of 2, you'd get a number that it's actually going to keep repeating for forever. If my calculator had more, more uh, decimal places, it would keep going on forever. But today we'll only have rational radicals, and it's actually fairly easy. It's a lot like what you did in sixth grade with uh, Miss Hannah. Who here remembers prime factorization trees? Okay, so we're going back to the good old pixie days. Good old pixie days. We're going to find some factor tree-like things. But, but since you're now in eighth grade, it's going to be a little bit different. Instead of just finding prime factorization, trying to find primes, you are going to have to find perfect square uh, factors. So before we even look at the square root of 900, let's go through the perfect square factors. Aiden, could you please give me the first perfect square factor? What number is a perfect square? Four is a perfect square, all right. Is there another perfect square before that? Michael? One. one. Now, one is not going to be terribly helpful for us, but we'll just include it. So uh, four is a perfect square. Could someone give me another perfect square? Six. A six. Uh, I mean, no, 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 six no, is sorry, not a perfect sorry. square. Okay, uh, think, thinking even numbers there. Uh, Nick? Sixteen. Sixteen. 16 is definitely a perfect square because 4 times 4 is 16. Sarah? 9. 25. We're, we're going to go on for, uh, for a while. Yes, sir? Michael? Okay, we're going to put that. We're going to put that down here. Sir? 49. Beth? You said 64, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, Robbie? 81. 81. Um, Nick? 100. Uh, Aiden? 121. Then comes our 144. All right. Uh, does anyone know the next one? 169, 196, and then we'll stop here at 215. So you should know these, the first 15 perfect squares. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to look for a perfect square factor that is on our list on the right that goes into 900. So what perfect square number goes into 900? 30 is not a perfect square factor. I'm sorry. You're jumping ahead of us. I know. I know. Ashby? 9 100. Okay, so the square root of 900 is going to be equal to the square root of 9 times the square root of 100. What? Because 9, oh, nine times, 100. times 100 is 900. Okay. So the square root of 9 times the square root of 100 is equal to the square root of 900. Mm -hmm. oh. Nothing crazy going on here so far. But wait, the square root of 9 can be expressed as something even simpler. What, what is the square root of 9, Margo? The square root of 3 is the square root of What is the square root of 9? Three. 3. And we just did that stand up, sit down thing, so you know the square root of 9 is 3. What is the square root of one of one hundred? Ten. 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 
So the square root of 900 is equal to the square root of 9 times the square root of 10, which is equal to 3 times 10, which is equal to what, Harper? 30. 30. Excellent. So, okay. the si so the square root of 900 is equal to 30. Not too bad. So let's try another one. Now, to be honest with you, we probably could have figured out the square root of 900 uh, off the top of our head. Harper already did. Um, this time, we're going to take the square root of 1,296. And we're not using calculators whatsoever for this. So to be honest with you, I do not know off the top of my head what the square root of 1,296 is. OK, I do because we just did it last period. But you don't. What number that is on our list here on the right goes into 1,296? That is also a perfect square. And you can start small. There's nothing wrong with starting small. Sarah? Four. Four. So the square root of 1,296 is equal to the square root of four times, and I'm going to have to divide that here. Since we're not using calculators, it's a simple long division problem. 4 goes into 12 three times. So bring down the 9, 2. There's my 8. Subtract it. I get 1. Bring that down. So I get the square root of 324. All right. But 324, uh, you know, I, I don't know what that is what the square root of that is off the top of my head. So is there another perfect square factor that goes into 324? Four. Four. OK, so let's break it down again. So the square root of 324 is equal to the square root of 4 <coughs> times the square root of? Wait, how did you figure out? Eighty-one. Here we go. So now I have gotten this down to perfect squares. So, what is the square root of four? Two. What is the square root of four? Two. What is the square root of nine? So the square root of one hundred twenty or one hundred. Sorry, one thousand two hundred ninety-six is equal to the square root of four times the square root of three hundred twenty-four. The square root of 324 is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 9, of uh, square root of 81. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 4 here is 2. And the square root of 89 is 9. We multiply them together. And our answer is? 36. Now, our third problem, our third variation, is just as simple as the ones that we've done before with two small differences. The first small difference is there is a negative sign outside of the, pr of the square root bracket. So that already tells me my final answer will be negative. negative. So I can just write this on the outside. I know it's going to be negative. I don't have to worry about it. The other difference. The other difference, and here's what my negative in the problem, so it's going to translate to a negative answer. The other difference is now I have a fraction. Now, in my first problem, I said I could break the square root of 900 apart into the square root of 9 times the square root of 100. That means I can break this apart. I could say the square root of 64 divided by the square root of 169. And I have not changed the problem at all. <laughs> is there anyone confused with my mathematics? Oh, this is really easy, actually. Well, I thought you just said that there's no such thing as a negative square Ah. I said that if, I, I said earlier that, I said, what is the square root of negative 4? This would be the square root of negative 4. This is the negative. See how the negative is on the outside? There's a big difference between having a negative inside the square root bracket and having the negative on the outside. Yeah, but is it, you'll still have to multiply the negative by the negative. So it's going to be the 
No. So, so this would be equivalent to saying negative 1 times the square root of 64 over the square root of 169. So you cannot have a square root inside the bracket, but you can have it outside. Now, as luck would have it, you can, if you go into imaginary numbers, you can have this negative inside the square root bracket. But we're not going into an imaginary numbers today. They're, they're pretty fun. Aiden, if I see the back of your head again, so help me God. All right. So what is the square root of 64? Eight. What is the square root of 64? Aiden. It's eight. Thank you. <laughs> what is the square root of 169? Kira. 13. 13. So the last step here is, is there a number that goes into 8 and 13? No. No. Because 13 so is prime. 13 is prime. So I cannot reduce this any further. So my final answer is just negative 8 over 13. That's easy as pi. It, it is easy as pi, but, but again, pi is pi irrational. Pi is and this is all rational. Oh, well. All right. My last example problem is marginally more difficult. It's sort of putting everything together into the three problem from the three problems into one. So this time, this time instead of having a negative on the outside, there is a plus or minus symbol. So that means there are two possible answers. There is the positive answer and there is the negative answer. Plus or minus. Now, this is not going to change how you approach the problem. It's not going to add any steps for what you're doing. You just have to acknowledge that the answer will be plus or minus the number that you get at the end. So just like having this negative symbol on the outside for the, our previous problem, you know already that your answer is going to have a plus or minus symbol, and you can just go on from there, OK? It's not going to make you do anything different. So. In this problem here, the first thing I did was to break it apart. So we have the square root of 576 over the square root of 1,225. Now, off the top of my head, I do not know what the square root of 576 is because you're using calculator and you're not allowed to, Missy. All right. Nor do I know off the top of my head what the square root of 1,225 is. So I'm going to have to break this problem apart into two separate s square roots. So we have the square root of 576. We have the square root of 1,225. What goes into what goes into 576? That is a perfect square factor from my list here. Maybe four. Four. I, I'm willing to bet four is going to go in there. So we have the square root of four times the square root of 144. So the square root of 576 is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 144. Oh, so and that's really, really wicked cool because I know what the square root of 144 is. What is the square root of 4? 2. two. two. So this reduces to 2 t times 12 is 24. Did you just do the division in your head? Yeah, uh, that's what I did right here. So then, uh, what goes into this number? And this is a pretty easy one to pick because I, <laughs> it ends in 25, so maybe I should pick what, Beth? 25. 25. So this is equal to the square root, sorry, of 25 times the square root of 49. You can do the division at home or at your desk, and you can find out it's right. All right, what is the square root of 25? Five. What is the square root of 49? Seven. So the square root of 1,225 is equal to? 35. So I'm going to bring these two pieces into our answer area. So we have the answer of, well, we should 
restate the problem. The square root of 576 over the square root of 1,225 is going to be equal to, or plus or minus, it's going to be equal to plus or minus 24 over 35. Now our last step is to look for any common factors and reduce if necessary. Can you think of any common factors for 35 and 24? No. no. So we are done. That is the final answer.